Today, the Senate will vote on the nomination of Courtney Elwood to be CIA General Counsel. This is an important job that got even more important in the past week. As I'll explain, this position may play a crucial role in determining whether history is erased or preserved for generations of Americans to come. As senators know, last week, the current chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee demanded that several key government agencies get rid of their copies of the torture report prepared by Senator Feinstein and her colleagues. I'm going to take a few minutes to describe what this has to do with Courtney Elwood. In short, it starts with the CIA's history of torture, which was carefully documented and sourced by the intelligence leadership under Senator Feinstein's leadership. This is the issue that is being debated, the CIA's history of torture. That is why it is critically important that the CIA get its copy of the report back. If Courtney Elwood is confirmed, the decision on whether or not to do so may be up to her. Here's why. The CIA director, Mr. Pompeo, who said at his confirmation hearing that he would read the report, has gotten rid of the CIA's copy. He did so despite the fact that the current chair of the Intelligence Committee had no authority to demand this of him. Mr. Pompeo got rid of the report despite a personal promise to read it. And he did this even though it may have violated the law. And it certainly violated a fundamental principle important to the American people that in this country we don't erase history. Now, this can be fixed. The CIA can get the report back. It can do what Senator Feinstein told the government to do back in 2014, which is to distribute this report, read it, learn from it. Will Director Pompeo get the report back on his own? There's no reason to think so. But if there's one thing Director Pompeo said again and again during his remarks through the confirmation process, Director Pompeo told the Senate Intelligence Committee repeatedly that he's going to rely on the advice of his lawyers. And that is exactly where Courtney Elwood comes in. What will her advice be to Director Pompeo? What will she advise him about whether to allow this attempt to erase history to stand, or whether it's going to get fixed and the report is going to be brought back? The Senate doesn't have any idea this morning. We do know that Ms. Elwood's responses to questions on the torture issue were troubling, and that we need to look at those responses in a whole new light based on what happened last week. Now, Ms. Elwood said that she read the unclassified executive summary of the torture report. But based on her responses to questions, the 500-page executive summary was not adequate for her, was not sufficient for her to conclude 
whether the CIA's interrogation techniques violated the law. So clearly, she needed to read the classified report. Ms. Elwood, in both her written answers and at her hearing, said that she would read the classified report. But now, because of what the current chair of the Intelligence Committee and the director of the CIA have done, it's not going to be available. It's not going to be available for her to read. Now, many members of this body have spoken out about the torture report and the need for its lessons to be learned so this country never again engages in the kind of illegal, damaging program that Senator Feinstein has documented. But now there is an issue that goes beyond what the Senate has thought this issue was all about. Now there is an individual nominee for whom these lessons are critical. This nominee told our committee that she had not yet studied whether the CIA's torture techniques were legal. She told us that she would read the report, and now the report is gone. What could be more troubling than that? What is at issue here is one of the most disturbing and undemocratic events to ever take place in the United States Senate. The current chair of the Intelligence Committee has told the executive branch to get rid of its copies of the report, and at least some of the agencies have sent their only copies to the committee. So I'm going to be clear, the current chair does not have the authority to do this. First, in December of 2014, the full final classified report was filed as a Senate report. It is therefore not a committee document. Second, no one can retroactively change the status of a historical Senate report. The report was finalized, filed, transmitted to the executive branch during the 113th Congress. Only in the 114th Congress did the current chair assume the chairmanship and begin to assert control over the report. So think about the implications here. How can this body allow members of Congress who don't like what a previous Congress has done to unilaterally try to erase history. How many other congressional reports would be at risk? There are other reports that have not yet been fully declassified. Should the Senate worry about whether or not they'll be protected? Should Americans be concerned that the country's historical records are going to be erased before the public ever sees them? My view is the effort by the current chair of the committee is an assault on one of the fundamental values of our democracy. That in this country, you don't eradicate a historical record just because you find it uncomfortable. Now, there's a reason why insecure dictators do it. And there's a reason why this kind of thing has never happened here. Because we are a confident democracy that's always looked to our own history and all our flaws as we seek to build a better nation. We're better than this. I urge my colleagues to defend these principles. I urge them to vote against this nomination. I yield back.